Hi, this is Tor from IDCON. Today's video is about common mistake when performing root cause failure analysis. This is part one. As you know, if you follow IDCON, we call root cause failure analysis, root cause problem elimination. Uh, because that's the result we want, not the actual analysis, we want the elimination. But for uh, search engines purposes, we call this root cause failure analysis RCFA, so people can find this video. Um, one of the most common problems is that we take basically write an essay for a problem statement. We write down everything we know and what happened as a problem statement. This becomes very, very confusing for the people or for us trying to solve the problem. Um, I think it's easier to describe this with a problem. I, I made a slide here. Let's say we have a situation with a pump. Uh, and the, what we know so far in our root cause is the pump sounds as if it's cavitating. The bearings are hotter than normal. The valve upstream is open 75%, close to 25%. The operator says that she heard a noise around 4.30 a.m. this morning. The packing is leaking too much water. The pump is not delivering enough flow. There's a leak in the inlet pipe right before the pump inlet. So there's a bunch of information. So if you write this as a problem statement, it's great. We have a bunch of information. Some was useful, some may not be related, but there's a bunch of information we have here. And in many cases, I see that we use this as the problem statement. The problem is that here we have five objects and we have six problems. I underline the objects in red, uh, as you see, and then I have the problems here in purple and they are six of them. So we're trying to really solve six, seven problems here with different objects, right? And you can do that, and, if, and all of us use some type of cause and effect diagram, whether you call it tree or taproot or whatever, but it's a cause and effect diagram that we typically use. It just becomes an extremely big diagram. So how do we deal with this? One of the skills in root cause is to be able to take a situation and transform that into a problem statement. And if we look at the next slide, the rule for the problem statement is one object and one problem. That's going to help you out a lot. So now you're thinking, what am I going to do with all this information I have? And what do I pick? So if you look at the list that we had, you need to pick one problem and honestly it depends on what you're trying to solve. Maybe you want to say, I want to solve why the bearings are hot and that's fine, but you can't assume that that's going to fix the problem with the, the problem with the flow in the pump. And me reading this list, I'm going to guess that for the plant that we're talking about, that this, the most important thing is that we need to solve why we don't have enough pump flow. So I'm going to make the pump flow my problem statement. So if I draw this up, I'm, I'm going to do some type of cause and effect. We call it the how can diagram. Um, so I have uh, the trigger is some type of production loss and my problem statement in green here is pump not delivering enough flow. And here in my problem statement I have one object which is the pump and not enough flow that is the uh, problem. And I could quantify this if I can uh, and by, by gallons per minute or whatever you use. And then I can take the other information and where do I put that? Well I put that as potential causes not causes, but potential causes. So I draw what we call our how can. So I say pump cavitation could definitely cause the pump not to have enough flow. Uh, inlet pipe leak could be a cause by itself without having the cavitation. Packing leaking, too much water, oh, not the likely, unlikely packing would, would, would leak that much water, but it could. Um, valve upstream is, is, is open only 75%. That seems like an easy one to check if that's actually causing the low pump flow. Depends on where that valve is located. And then we can look at, we can continue on, of course, and put in more information, like why can the pump, or how can the pump cavitate? Well, the inlet pipe leak could definitely do it. The valve that's upstream open, only 75% can cause the cavitation. And there could be a number of other things, but we don't have any other information that's actually pointing to that direction at this point. So this short tip is really convert that situation into a problem statement and solve the problem you want to you want to solve one at a time. If you then are left with the hot bearings that we didn't use and the funny noise the operator heard, we'll make a new root cause and solve that problem. Because if you're trying to solve six, seven problems at the same time, it gets really tricky to do root cause. 
Thanks for listening and I hope that you subscribe to our channel and click the little bell down here so you get the updates. We're trying to make these videos at least a few times a month. Thanks for listening.